I was sexually and mentally and physically abused. And I suppressed all of those memories until the time me and Lance got me married. I pushed all those things down and just hit them. It was a really, really rough time. He was a really, really bad alcoholic. And at closer to the end, he had gotten mixed up into drugs. And he had got to the point, you know, every time he would do something, he'd just threaten to kill me. And I wouldn't say anything to any of my siblings or to my mom because I was afraid, I was afraid he would kill them. Good Lord, good Lord. So I just kept it quiet and thought I could deal with it myself. I thought it would be better that way. So I pretty much just kind of lived, lived a life of fear. And so when I got it over enough to date, I just started dating older guys because I did not have any type of father figure of any kind. And so I would date them because I'd never felt that type of love for anyone. So I kind of re replaced that with someone giving me that attention that I never had. So I would go out with people and expect them to give me the love that my dad never gave me. Because the only thing he could ever give me was abuse and harm and hatred and fear. Until I met Lance, which when I met him, it was totally different. And that's the first thing. Uh, you know, I really fell in love with someone that really treated me good for a change. And Thank you, Jesus. I didn't know what that was like. And so after we were together for a while and he asked me to marry him, you know, and the first year and a half I got pregnant, you know, things started to change and we started having a few problems because I did not know how to deal with things. I started remembering things and I was like, what are all these memories, you know, where are these memories coming from? And it, it ended up, I was starting to remember everything from my childhood and everything my dad had done. Well, by this time, my dad had gotten, he was really, really, like I said, really, really bad alcoholic and he got me into drugs and got me into a lot of trouble. And he ended up going to jail and that's where he died. He was in the jail cell. And so for a long time, I had all this bitterness and hate. And his family never believed anything that I said. I never discussed it with my mom. I've never discussed it with my mom until this day. Mm -hmm. My sister has. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So, you know, Lance was the most, we were so young, and we had our first child. And we were trying to deal with things being normal, but then we were trying to deal with me not understanding what was going on. Also, because I had not, un I could not understand why my dad had done what he had done. So I was, you know, really, 
lashing out and me and Lance would have problems after problems. And then, you know, we would make up and we would have fights, you know. I mean, it was just all over the place. And we weren't in church. So it just, you know, it was it was really hard on a really young couple with a child. So, I mean, thankfully we had Lance's dad because he was in church and he was a very, very godly man. And at that time, he was always, y'all need to get in church, y'all need to get in church. Amen. He Amen. was always, it was, he would, we have a, it's like a library full of books. He would bring this constant. It was, y'all need to read this book, y'all need to read this book. <laughs> Amen. And, um. So let's, we had started going to his church. And by this time, we had had our other daughter. And so we got really involved, or me and the girls had started going to church, and me and the girls got in church for quite a while. And it was hit and miss because Lance was new in his law enforcement. And so, and he worked deep nights, and so it was hard for him to go. And so me and the girls got to where we were going to church constantly. And uh, my girls actually, they got baptized. And I, me and my sister, when we were younger, we went to church constantly. We would get on the bus and go all the time. And we were both saved and baptized when we were little. <clears throat> So when uh, me and the girls would go to church, my girls decided, you know, they were really, they were really involved and stuff. Well, both of them got baptized and saved, and it was awesome. Well, I decided to rededicate my life again. And I still remember the day that on the way home from church that Sunday, Mike called Lance and woke him up. And told him, he said, Lance, you're, you know, you're not going to believe what well, Stacy rededicated her life. And it just really upset Lance that Lance was not at church that day. Well, Lance was like, well, I can't do this, you know. I've got to start going to church with my family. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I've got to be able to stay awake long enough to go and start doing Praise this. Praise the Lord. So Lance really would try to stay awake and go to church with us. Well, we lived in Celeste that time, and so we drove back and forth to Sulphur Springs for a very long time. Well, that was, you know, our lives really started to change then, and we did really wonderful while we were in church. While we were in church, <laughs> you know, that's the key word, while we were in church. Hello. Amen. Well, things started, you know, we moved, and we didn't have a church home to go to. And so things would fall apart again. That's right. That's right. But I always, always loved the Lord, and I always remained in prayer. Well, we got to, uh, Lance started working in a different, he was always in Hunt County working. And we actually moved to uh, Cattle Mills. And I got really involved in women's ministry and started going in to the prisons, ministering to women. Praise God. And all the jails and stuff. And I loved it. It was awesome. And I worked full time and I loved my job. And I just, I was always on fire for the Lord. And I loved him so much. And like I said, I had a, my mother was also my stepdad is amazing. I mean, my sister and my brother, they've always been amazing. And my grandparents, when I was younger, my grandparents were my safe haven. I went there, that's where I felt safe, with my grandparents. I could go there and I felt like I could just turn off the world. 
Thank you, Jesus. Well, my grandmother and my grandfather had gotten sick. We had lost my grandfather. And then years later, we lost my grandmother. Well, when my grandmother passed away, it was like my world fell apart. before that's when I had started getting sick at work and I really started getting really dizzy and nauseous at work and I had gone to doctor after doctor and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me and we'd gone to specialists and maybe she kept telling me they said we don't know what's wrong with you it's all in your mind and I was like I know this is not in my mind well, I dealt with it for about a year and a half. Well, it got to the point where I couldn't work. And so I ended up having to quit the job that I had been with for a very, very long time. And what? And it broke my heart. It got to where I couldn't go to church anymore. It got to where I had to quit the women's, the prison ministry. I couldn't go into the jails. I was in, in the, I was at the hospitals more than I was at home. I couldn't go to my girls' ball games. It was, it was really bad. I couldn't sleep for days. I hurt from the time I got up in the morning from the time I went to bed. So I finally, we finally found a specialist that told me, he said, you have fibromyalgia. And this was years ago when fibromyalgia first came out. And we were like, well, what's that? And he started telling us that it affected all the muscles in your body. And uh, he's like, well, we'll get you started on this medicine. And so they would start you on pain medicines and antidepressants. Well, they would get, they got me started on all these. Well, one thing led to the next. And they sent me to a different doctor. Well, they would diagnose me with something else. It ended up going from one doctor to the next doctor to, I ended up having they quote unquote 16 different diseases. We, in, we like more or less call them illnesses. I had COPD, Crohn's disease, fibromyalgia. Uh, at one time they told me I had parvo. Um, I had a list that was so long. I was on over 27 different pain medicines. Mm -hmm. uh, they would, I would go in and they would just put me on a different pain medicine because one pain medicine wouldn't work. I heard from the time I got up from the time I go to bed. Uh, I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. The only thing I could do was pretty much I just, I barely functioned was more or less what it was. Uh, Kelsey was, it got to where, Kelsey was old enough where she could homeschool. And she decided that she wanted to stay home because Lance had taken off so much to take care of me. And Kelsey wanted to start being able to take uh, the schools were really getting bad anyway, and she, we decided to let her homeschool, and so we put her in a Christian school, uh, a Becca Academy, and she was really, really intelligent and everything, so we agreed to let her do that, but we knew her main thing was she wanted to be home with me. So she stayed home, and she more or less took care of me. 
And it's pretty bad when your 14 year old daughter has to stay home and take care of you when you're your, you're the adult. And I stayed in bed from the time I got up, from the time Lance would get home. Lance did all the cooking, the cleaning. He took care of the kids. He did everything. And Dad just tripped away from me. It was pretty bad. <laughs> you have so much more guilt and shame that you can take care of your own kids. But you can't take care of your husband. Anybody else would have gotten up and left. But not this man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He stayed right by me. So tough. I felt so sorry for my oldest daughter. She was in high school. Close time for her to graduate. And I couldn't even go. She was in drill team. And I couldn't even go to her, her functions. But when I did go, I was more or less a zombie because of the medication and stuff they had me on. I took, I was on so many op opioids that they had me on. But it is, I would take like uh, 300, the patches they put me on were the patches they normally put on terminal ill patients right before they die. And the bad thing is, is those didn't even take the pain away. I still felt the pain. And they would continue. When I go, I would tell them I still have pain. And they would just want uh, the pain medicine more. And I tell them I don't want any more. And they were like, there's nothing we can do for you. Dear Jesus. And then the whole time I'd pray and ask God, just take me home. I just want to go home. I've suffered for too long. And I've hurt my kids. I've hurt my husband and they deserve better than this. I don't want them to suffer any longer. And I don't want to live this way anymore. I've we had more procedures done in the hospital awake than when you're supposed to actually be knocked out because they couldn't get me knocked out. Wow. Good Lord. I felt more pain. And most people were ever experienced a long time. But I know God had a reason for it. I used to go before I even knew what a secret place was, and I'd crawl in our closet and I'd just cry out to him. And I said, just please, just please take your pain away. Because there wasn't one inch of my body that didn't hurt. I just want to say, you know, after all this, all this time that, she, that she's talking about, all those years that went by, you know, I strongly feel that's just a, that was attack from the enemy. Absolutely. You know, she was got in the prison ministry. That's right. Oh my gosh, you're, getting, you're in the devil's territory. That's right. And we didn't know how to, didn't, she didn't know how to defend herself. Right. We didn't know anything about spiritual warfare. That's right. I didn't know anything about spiritual warfare. My dad, 
Yeah. All the books I told you he gave us was spiritual warfare yeah, about spirit looking. <laughs> I opened up one one time and I read a little bit and I started looking around the room. <laughs> so I, I have a passion for spiritual warfare because Amen. that woman right there Amen. Has, go. has one, and that's where she that's who taught me. Hallelujah. And I, that's who she taught me how to fight. Yes. Praise she God. taught me how to fight against the enemy. Praise God. Praise God. And along with that, when we started going to church again, and I started learning from my pastors, they were preaching on surrender. Amen. Mm. That Amen. just blew me away. Jesus. When I learned about that. Hallelujah. He even told me about he told me about this uh, the book, this book Absolute Surrender by John Murray. Uh, I've read that book. And I started, surrender is like in my brain constantly. I couldn't get that word out of my head. I go home and I started telling her, just surrender. It's like talking about surrendering, surrendering in the faith. I just start reading the story in scripture about the woman who had to suffer from hemorrhaging for 12 years. Yes, she was. And how she just yeah. touched Jesus' cloak. And there's more to that story, but, yes. but just the faith that that woman had. Amen. The faith that it took for her just to, to do what she did. Amen. Amen. I started speaking that stuff to her and talking to her and just about surrendering because, like I said, at that point, I was getting spiritually fed. And I was growing and just trying to soak in what I could. And I was just trying to just share it with her as well and yes, yes. teach her as well about surrendering. And that's what it took. That's what it took. And that's one thing that's been on my heart. It's on my heart right now. Is you want to, we hinder, most time we hinder from God working in our life. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Agendas. We get in the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God does not take second place. Amen. He has to be priority. Amen. And that's what absolute surrender is. Amen. You get on your knees in that closet. And you give him absolute control. Everything. Your family, your children, your, your finances, your job, your health, whatever it is. Amen. Let him have it. Amen. 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 That's what it took. When we did that, and I did that, and she did that. That's when God steps in and said, All right, now I got something to work with. Now I can do something. Yes. Hallelujah. And my gosh, did it. <laughs> Did he? I just was standing here today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. I'm Amen. telling you. You don't have to live your life in misery. Amen. You may get your card punched to get saved, like I did when I was 10 years old. Right. But the, de the devil will make you a miserable Christian the rest of your life. Yes. yes. Absolutely. He will beat right. you down. Amen. And beat you down and keep you in bondage. She, he, she, kept, she was kept suppressed in bondage yes. for 15, 16 years. Good God. I was too, but in a different way. You know, you want to, you want to be free. Amen. God can free you. Free yes. you fear, yes. but you got to give him everything. And I'm telling you, anybody that's got unforgiveness or bitterness in their heart, you need to deal with it. That's number one. Yes. That's number one. You expect God to get forgive us. That's right. You have to forgive others. Yep. You Amen. To, you have to forgive yourself. Amen. She had to forgive herself. Yes. So that I uh, wanted to share that. That's on my heart. I have a burden on that from my heart on that. That's the message. That's the message. Hallelujah. I encourage you. I encourage you when y'all leave here. To, when you leave here today, the people out here on the internet that's listening, get into the word. It's, it's simple. I know it's, it's it's simple, but it's it's difficult. But you have to get into the word. You have to feed your spirit. You have to feed. Just like if you don't, if you don't feed your body daily, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Your body's going to start to death. Well, if you ain't feeding your spirit, your spirit's going to die. That's right. Amen. Amen. You have Absolutely. to feed your spirit daily. Amen. I got Tracy used to tell me. I used to tell her about the songs I listened to going to work. All the Christian songs. She's like, Yeah, well, that's good. She was, I listen to sermons. <laughs> 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 you know? So that's what I've been doing for a long time now. Hallelujah. I, love, I used to hate my 30 mile drive to work. <laughs> that's Bible college. Yes. 
But I listen to sermons after sermon. Yes, after sermon. hallelujah. Feeding. Feeding my spirit. Amen. My oh, gosh. It will turn your life around. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Yes, I sir. had to say that. I'm sorry. That's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. 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 I'd like to Stacy continue with uh, healing. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Closer to, I'll just kind of move on a little bit. But um, after we started getting into church more and everything, We had, like I said, we moved back to Greenville. We had been over in the McKinney area for a long time. And we moved back to Greenville and we did start going to the church here. And I was pretty much, I guess pretty much at our last hope because I was really bad. I had lost down so much weight. And It was just a really, really bad situation. And it was either I was going to get better or I was not going to make it. That's right. That's right. That's exactly what it was about. It was either the medicine was going to kill me or God was going to save me. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's what it was going to be. And so, um, because I was... Like I said, I was on the strongest medicine you could get. And um, Lance had been coming home, and I had never lost, never really lost hope. I had always continued to pray and ask God for help. But I would always take everything. I would ask God for help, but then I would take it back. And I would say, I think I can handle it. Hello. I would never give him control, Hello. full control. I would always <laughs> think, you know, I can do it. I can do it. Well, uh, so I would go to a doctor and think, you know, this doc, maybe this doctor can help me. And he never could. I wouldn't. I was always too scared to give God full control of it. That's good. So. Uh, Lance was talking to Teresa, and he always would come home and talk about holy surrendering. And he came home, and Lance was really on fire for God. So I started reading my Bible, and I was like, you know, something has got to change in my life. So the only thing I could do was really was lay in bed. It was all I could do. I would go to church when I could, and. So I laid in bed and I listened to an audio Bible when I couldn't read. And I did this for weeks on weeks. Thank you, Jesus. And we had, I had developed, it was like back in, um, I think it was like in October or so, August. I had this rash come up on my eye and I'd gone to the doctor. And doctors couldn't figure out what it was. It was little blisters. And they kept telling me they couldn't figure out, you know, we don't know what it is. And it went on for like four months. Well, I finally went in like the fifth month. And the doctor said, Stacy, you have shingles in your eye. You need to go see an eye specialist. And I was like, okay. So we had no idea who to go to. And Lance's mother had been seeing an eye specialist had done, did some surgery on her eye and she said she's a fantastic Christian woman. You need to go see her. So Lance and I were like, okay, we'll go see her. So uh, we went and 
decide we were going to go to see her, we prayed because we were like, they told us when I went to the doctor that day, they said, Stacy, you've had this for quite a while. This could be really scary because it's in your eyes. When it gets in your eyes, it's pretty dangerous. And we were like, well, you know, I've had everything else in the world. This is just one more thing. But I didn't want to leave my eyesight. And uh, from what the doctors were had, the primary care doctors were telling me, it could be pretty bad. And I had had it for five months, and so it was pretty serious. So we go that day, and we see this doctor, and we're praying out in the parking lot. But you know, normally Lance and I did not pray together at all, but we had started doing this. And so we prayed out in the parking lot before we went in and saw her. And we got in there that day, and she looked at him, and she's like, Oh my gosh, she said, this is really, really bad. Um, she said, this is the shingles. And she said, normally, she said, I'm as honest as I can with you. She said, as bad as yours are, she says, I'm normally doing surgery on people right now, taking the whole top part of your eye off, the layer of your eye. She said, God is already doing work. She said, I'm just being very frank with you. She said, this is already a miracle right here, she said. Bless the Lord. Have already removed Amen. the top part layer Thank from you your Jesus. eye. She said, I can't you believe Jesus. you're still seeing. And Lance and I were really shocked. And she started looking at my paperwork and she's like, I can't believe you've got all these sicknesses. She said, What is going on with you? And she's like, I really think I can help you. Praise God. And uh, she said she had told us about her son that had had a really bad sickness and that when he was 17 and that she helped him. So she told me, she said, I've got this medicine I think I can put you on and it can really help with your fibromyalgia. And she said, but you, you know, and she said, and I think I can help you get off your opioids. And I was like, you know, every doctor we've always been told this about told me I would have to go in a treatment center and I'd have to be in there for months, but there was no way I could get off these things. And I don't want to go into a treatment center and leave my family for months. And she's like, no, she said, I think I can help you do this. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I, so Lance and I, she said, I've got to get you over these shingles first. And so we're like, okay. So we left. She gave me the prescriptions for the shingles. And she said, y'all pray about it. And she prayed with us in the office. And she, and she said, oh, y'all, she said, thank you, Lord. go home. You know, <clears throat> think about this. And she said, and I'll see you in a couple of months. She said, because it'll take y'all that long to get rid of these shingles. And we're like, okay. And so we, that was like on a Tuesday or so. And we went home and we prayed about it. And I went to church that Wednesday night. And, and, uh, and, you know, we were still new at the church and everything. And one of the ladies at church, I was at the altar and didn't know a whole bunch of people there. And uh, later after I got through praying at the altar, I came back and one of the ladies came up to me and she said, I just want to let you know that um, God showed me a vision of you. And I was like, okay. Kind of freaked me out a little bit, and she's like, she said, he showed me a vision, and there's a, a serpent, or more or less a python, that's wrapped completely around your neck, all the way down your body. Praise the Lord, that's right. Uh, trying that's right. to, trying to choke you and kill you. But she said there is a outside that python, there's a, a fire that's burning around mm -hmm. that outside that fire. Yeah. And God spoke to me and said, He's not going to let anything happen to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And she had never met me and Lance before at all. And so we were like, okay. And I said, can you write that down for me? <laughs> 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 we were really, we were like, okay. I said, because I have a real bad memory. I said, I really need that. <laughs> and so she's like, I'll get that to you. I said, okay. So we went home and. You know, and I had continued. I was like really reading my Bible a lot, 
and listening because at this point I was not sleeping at all. And when I say not sleeping, I'm talking at all. We're, it had been like weeks and I was like a zombie. And I told the doctor that I wasn't sleeping and she's like, there's nothing I can do because I was actually on sleeping medicine also. And the sleeping Good medicine Lord. was not working. Good and um, so we went to church that Sunday. We got up and went to church that Sunday. And I went back down to the altar again because I was like, no. I know that God was God. I know God is going to take care of this. I just I feel it in my bones. And uh, when I got back up at the end of service, that same lady came back up to me. And I'm like, and she's like, Stacy, she said, God showed me something else. And I was like, okay. And she said, she, he showed me you standing there in a white rope with your hands held high. And he told me that you had surrendered everything to him. Amen. And I was like, okay. And so I was just bawling by this time. And uh, I told Lance and I took Kelsey and Lance and Kelsey were just crying. And Lance and Kelsey had gone down to the altar and they prayed that day. We're there, my boss. And uh, so we went back home and I did not know at this point. I had asked her also, not knowing her, I had asked her to pray if I should take this medicine with this doctor about that medicine because I was really weary about taking it and I was very anxious about it. And I asked her, I said, should I take this medicine that this doctor has been prescribing? I said, I have no idea about it. And I said, should I take it? I said, because I don't know anything about it. And she said, God spoke to her and told her that I should take and trust me. And I was like, okay. Because we had no idea anything about this medicine. We had looked it up, but we could not find a lot about it because it was an older type medicine and they did not use it a lot. And actually what the medicine was for, it was supposed to trap the opioid receptors and block it so it could help you get off of it. Praise God. And so we went home. We did a lot of praying. Kelsey constantly checked on me day in, day night. Um, and she was a lot. I mean, she did everything for me. And I was constantly dropping weight, you know, a little bit, by, you know. And I was only weighing like about 98 pounds. And that was a good weight for me at that time. Well, we went back to see the doctor, and it was like January. And that was my second time. And we told her we were going to, we decided we, I was going to take the medicine. And she said, well, you finish up with your antibiotics and stuff for the shingles. And, you know, we'll get you started on the other. So, and it was like in sometime in February when I started the medicine. And uh, so I laid in the bed several days. And in all the meanwhile, I was doing that, you know, I prayed and several days went by and there was one certain day I remember because um, I remember praying so hard and having so many, you know, I was still so upset and stuff about all the hurt that I had gone through before and all upset mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the guilt from not being able to be there for my kids and everything, and everything had gone on from my past. I told Lance that one day, it was around lunchtime, because I remember him and Teresa were working, that I was laying there, and I was just praying so hard to God, that God just, out of nowhere, God just started speaking to me, and I was just like, okay. And he took me to the battlefield, and he put me in full armor, and took his long sword and gave me this long sword. And 
And he told me that he had forgiven me for all my sins and that there was no sense in me worrying mm -hmm. about all the things that had happened in the past. Hallelujah. That I needed to forget about all of that. <clears throat> Amen. Good. That I had forgiven my dad for everything he had done to me. That all that was laid to rest. I had forgiven all the doctors, forgiven all everything that they had done to me. Thank you, Jesus. There was no more hurt. There was no more pain. Thank you. And everything was just like, there. I felt so relieved. I mean, I was just like, oh my gosh. Hallelujah. I was so excited. I picked the phone up and I called Lance. <laughs> And Lance and Teresa are actually driving down the road. And I told Lance, I said, you're not going to believe what just happened. I said, God just spoke to me. And he told me that I was forgiven for everything. And I didn't have to worry about anything in the past. And I said, he took me to this battlefield, Lance. He put me in full armor. And I said, he put the sword. And I, and I was holding it. And he's like, and I, he told me, he said, you've got to hold on to me. And I've got to pull the car up. <laughs> well, I've been, I've been speaking to her about <laughs> being a warrior. I said, yeah. I've been telling yeah, her that God you. doesn't see you like we see each other. That's right. Amen. He sees you like he created you. That's right. He yes. sees you as a warrior. So I kept yes. telling her that. Telling her that. And she told me that day she was laying in bed. And then she was laying there. She goes, she was thinking to herself, she said, I can't see myself as a warrior. Mm. She said, boom. She said, that's what it happened. Wow. He took yeah. her shoulder. Yes. Praise, Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, so it was So we decided, <coughs> so that was really, really exciting. So, like I said, we decided for me to go ahead and take this medicine, unaware of what it was going to do or anything. Uh, so, I had, this was going on close to three weeks. I had no sleep. And um, I remember telling me, and Teresa and Lance and Kelsey. And my, like I said, my older daughter. Everybody was praying for me just to get some sweet sleep. I remember everybody was just constantly praying that. And it, it was literally a nightmare because my eyes, they felt so, so heavy. I did not turn the TV on one time. I, Kelsey kept telling me, Mom, aren't you going to watch TV? I would not watch TV at all. All I would do was listen to the Bible or on the audio or read my Bible. And I didn't want to hear anything. I didn't want to have any distractions or anything. It's just all I wanted to listen to, you know, was about God. And so I remember the first day that uh, I took the medicine. And like I said, we had no idea what it was going to do. And you had to actually take it around. Six o'clock. Well, Lance had come home. Lance had came home from work, and when we took it, the doctor had actually told me you need to cut one of these pain patches. It was fentanyl or fentanyl in half and leave it on me. So that's what we did. We trusted him and left this patch on me. Well, I took this medicine. Well, within 30 minutes of me taking this patch, I started hurting so bad, the pain was unbearable. I was screaming bloody murder. Lance didn't know what to do, Kelsey didn't know what to do. Um, it was really, really bad. I felt like I was being burned alive. Uh, we didn't know if it was withdrawals, I literally thought I was going to burn to death. My body was so hot. Um, I cried. I screamed. Lance prayed over me. That's the only thing that kept me calm. Kelsey sang. It's been long for almost nine hours. Which I 